Like all z-scores, when we conduct the join count statistic, we have to divide the difference between OBW and EBW by the standard error, some measure of a variation that is representative of the sampling error in our study design. In this case, the standard error of the black-white statistic of the black-white join count uh, is quite a complicated statistic. EBW is just the same EBW from the previous slide, and this is just EBW squared. But we're also going to introduce an X and a Y, where X is this equation over here, and Y is this one down here. All of the terms appear uh, before, are, and are defined as before, except we now have this new L. And an L, LI, oh, I've got it written down over here, LI is the number of neighbors for observation I. So for each polygon on the map, we can have an L, and that's just going to count how many neighbors polygon I has. So let's conduct a joint count statistic from scratch. So researchers would like to know whether the pattern of high and low influenza rates is spatially autocorrelated. So in this case, the white cells are low levels of influenza, and the black cells are high levels of influenza. Let's do this with the level of significance of 10%. The first step is to state the hypotheses. So here, the null hypothesis is that the pattern is random, in which case OBW would equal EBW. The alternative hypothesis is that the pattern is clustered, in which case we would have a smaller number of observed black-white joins. So what's known from this map? Well, we can calculate B, W, N, and J very easily. So first of all, N is 16. That's just because we have 16 cells on this map. Of those 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 of them are black, so B equals 7, and 9 are white. This is a 4x4 four four grid, and all 4x4 four four grids, when using rook connectivity, are going to have 24 joins. But let's count the black-white joints. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Those are the horizontal ones. And 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we have 11 black-white joints. Our observed number of black-white is 11. Recall that in order to compute these, the standard error back here, we're going to have to also use the L statistic, or this count of the links per cell. So over here, I've rewritten the, the, the links variable as a map. So this was formed by going, passing over each cell and counting how many neighbors it has. This cell has two, let me use a different color. This cell has two neighbors. This one has three. One, two, three. This one has three. One, two, three. This one in the middle has four. One, two, three, four. So for each location i, we're just keeping track of how many neighbors it has, and we're writing them in the boxes like this. So this is the, the pattern of links. The formula calls for the sum of links times links minus one. So here we have links minus one. We've just subtracted one from each link count. And over here, we have links times links minus one. So in order to get this value, we just took link i times link i minus one. So two times one equals two. To get this one over here, this, ha this location had four links. We multiply it by links minus one, which is three to get 12. 4 times 3 is 12. So we just, so this pattern over here is all of the L times L minus 1, and we need to sum up over all I. So we're just going to add up all of these values. 2 plus 6 plus 6 plus 2 plus 6 plus 12, and so on, and that gives us 104. So now we've got all the little pieces of information that we need to compute the statistic.